everybody. It's Corey here at moreguitars.com with another edition of Little Guy with a Big Guitar. Yes, I have a large and in charge Gibson non-reverse Thunderbird bass today. This is a miracle of modern science and art brought to you by Gibson. I can't tell you how much I love this guitar because I really, really love this guitar. Uh, it has a wealth of sounds uh, inside of it. It has really, really great appointments, great hardware, amazing electronics in here. Let's take a deep dive into what this guitar is. So this is an all mahogany body. It does feature a set neck. So unlike original Thunderbird non non reverse, is that a thing? I think it is. Uh, it doesn't have the raised back uh, center section on the back and the front. So this is a slab of mahogany with a mahogany neck with a rosewood fingerboard. It features hip shot ultralight tuners. These are great tuners. Uh, helps to reduce a little bit of weight at the headstock. We'll talk about that here in just a, a few minutes. Features two volume controls, a volume control for each pickup front and back and a shared treble roll off tone control that works really well. It does feature the uh, adjustable three point bridge from Gibson. Um, you can adjust it for intonation, you can adjust it back and forth, up and down, works really, really well. Uh, three points of contact with the body so you're getting all kinds of sustain out of this. I love the Gibson Thunder Bucker pickups in here. So this is a ceramic magnet, what everyone used to call soap bar uh, style humbucking pickup. So each pickup is going to be free of the dreaded 60 hertz hum in all of your recordings, uh, and they sound great together. Uh, it does feature a, a 34 inch scale. This happens to be Gibson's first uh, full long scale bass guitar. It was brought out in 1963. In uh, before 63, they had hired a, a gentleman from Chrysler named Dietrich. Mr. Dietrich had been uh, designing automobiles and automobile accessories. Gibson wanted to cash in on the great looks of the car models that were available in the late 50s and early 60s. Hence the name Thunderbird. Uh, you've probably seen a Thunderbird in an old Ford Thunderbird. A uh, very, very cool thing to have. They created the, the non-reverse body. So uh, in 63, this was flipped over. The longer horn was on the bottom, uh, and it literally was, the guitar looked like this. And Fender said, hey, that looks a lot like our jazz master. We think we're going to take you to court. So they did, and in response to that, legal action, they came out with a non-reverse Thunderbird. So you can get a regular Thunderbird now since, uh, I believe, 2012. They've been making, I guess it would be reverse Thunderbird. Uh, great, great instrument. One thing these things have always kind of uh, suffered from is neck dive. And that is when you have it on a strap, how fast does the headstock of the guitar try to meet the ground? Uh, these guitars, there isn't enough weight in the body and in this area in particular to uh, counterbalance. So like with a, a lot of guitars, most of my basses, I play uh, another brand um, quite extensively they most all of them dive to a certain extent this does have a, a bit of neck dive there's just no way to get around it you've got a, a big paddle headstock uh, like i said they put the hip shot ultralight tuners on there to reduce uh, a little bit of that i compensate by using a wide suede strap that kind of clings to my shirt uh, a little bit better than a nylon strap 
or a smooth le leather strap does. Uh, so that may be the fix for you. I know it was the fix for me. Uh, you know, results vary by, by customer. Um, this thing sounds great. Uh, it kind of sits in a, a great middle rock tone where you have quite a bit of, of low end from the neck humbucker. Uh, and you also have a considerable amount of bite with the, the bridge humbucker and the two of them blended together is a really, really great sound. You know, I could even see guys slapping and popping on one of these. It has that kind of tone. Uh, does have a little bit of a, a mid scoop with, with both of the pickups blended uh, full on together. Uh, you can experiment that with that when you get one of your own, or you can get this one. It is available, as always. Let's take a listen to these pickups and hear what we've got. What you heard on the intro uh, was both pickups at full volume. I'll play just just for a minute uh, in that same same position. The tone is all the way up, uh, as are both volumes. Here it is. <laughs> I hope you've got a good set of headphones or some nice studio monitors to listen to this thing because it really does have an amazing amount of roundness uh, to, the, to this particular bass. Let's take a listen to the bridge pickup by itself. So really cutting sound, um, would sound great with a larger band, uh, crank it up, you've got all the cut that you need to uh, get past a bass drum and cut through uh, some, some uh, distorted electric guitar. Let's take a listen to the neck pickup and see what we think. They weren't kidding when they called it a thunderbucker. There is a whole lot of gravy on those mashed potatoes, as my grandma would say. Uh, this thing, it is reasonably light, uh, a lot lighter than, than most mahogany set neck guitars I've played. Uh, I'm not sure what the, what the weight on this actual piece is. Uh, it's always listed on the website but just a, a terrific guitar. Uh, you've heard this, this guitar played by lots of notable people. Um, the bass player from Tesla played one in their videos in the late 80s, and I lusted after a Thunderbird uh, ever since. This is a great one. You should check it out at moreguitars.com or hear it more music in Evansville, Indiana. Until then, thank you. We'll see you later.